Hey squad, welcome to this bonus episode of Crime Squad Podcast. Earlier this week, I published the last episode in the series, The Devil's Playground, regarding inmate deaths at the Elgin Middlesex Detention Centre, or EMDC, here in my hometown of London, Ontario. I don't know if you've seen the news this week, but there has been yet another death at the EMDC, with little details released as of yet. Stay tuned, I hope to get more information soon. Some of you may remember the story of Sean William Teron Brightman, also known as Junior. If you want to listen to the full episode where Junior is featured, tune in to episode 23 of Crime Squad Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to follow the show so you don't miss any uploads, and if you feel like leaving a rating or review, that'd be great. It really does help the show. I was recently checking my email, as I often do, and I had an email from a person named Samara. She said she wanted to know how to listen to the episode featuring Junior, so I sent her a link. She then revealed to me that she's actually one of Junior's daughters. After a heartfelt exchange, I asked if there was anything she would be interested in saying about her father and the devastating loss she faced, perhaps how it impacted her life. She was very appreciative of this offer and sent me her words, which I'll share during this episode. Okay, squad, let's get into today's bonus episode. Grief is an enormous emotion. It is also one that can be everlasting and can ebb and flow constantly. The loss of a loved one can change a person forever. I know many people who just haven't been the same since experiencing loss. Many people grieve in their own way. When Junior's daughter Samara contacted me, she wrote me about a sadness that doesn't get better with time. It will be five years in March of 2024 that Junior's life was cut short while at the EMDC, and for her, it never gets any easier. Samara was a teenager when her father was at EMDC in 2019. She lived in another city with her mother, but was having some issues in her hometown. Specifically, she had started high school but fell into a bad crowd and started experimenting with drugs. Concerned for her, Samara's mother decided to send her to London in February of 2019 for a change of scenery. She was sent to stay with her grandfather, whom she called Papa. Being in London made it easier for Samara to go visit Junior at EMDC, and she was happy to see her dad. She fondly recalled the visits as being full of joy, but also a lot of sadness. Junior had addiction issues, but he was a great man despite what people may think. I've talked a lot about addiction before, because as a person in recovery for 14 years this year, I can tell you that drugs change a person. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. People don't set out one day to become an addict. People start using drugs for all kinds of reasons, from being prescribed painkillers that are highly addictive, to experimentation that takes a turn into something more. Junior wasn't inherently a bad person just because he got caught up in drug use. To many people, he was a loving person, a caring person. To Samara, he was her daddy, and he loved her. Samara and Junior talked about their mutual issues with drug use, and he told Samara they would get clean together and make a fresh start at life. When Junior was at EMDC, Samara visited him four times. They spoke on the phone once, but three days after that phone call, two police officers arrived at Samara's house and knocked on the door. They told her Junior had died. Samara was shocked, and the shockwaves would ripple into bad decisions to numb the pain of loss. After Junior died, Samara moved back home with her mother. She admits this wasn't the best choice, because she got right back into abusing drugs. Unfortunately, things got much worse, and Samara shared with me that she actually overdosed multiple times. Her mother was trying to do everything she could to get Samara into treatment, but Samara wasn't budging. 
One day, though, Samara says it just clicked for her. She thought about her father and realized Junior wouldn't have wanted Samara to continue down this path. She took the path of treatment instead, going as far as Ottawa to enter a 90-day treatment program. With a lot of hard work, Samara was able to pass the treatment program. She had a few relapses, but always made her way back to sobriety. At 17, Samara met her partner and got pregnant. She had a son, whom she named William after her dad's middle name. When little William smiles, Samara says her father's smile bursts out of him in such a beautiful way. She desperately wishes Junior could have met him, knowing that Junior would love him so much, just like Samara does. If Samara could send a message to her father, she'd want him to know that he pushed her to be a better person. She wants him to know how grateful she is to have known him, to have loved and been loved by him. She would thank him for being there for her. People say time heals all wounds, but for Samara, the wounds still feel fresh and raw, although it's been almost five years since Junior died. She still misses him, every day. She hopes to one day see justice. I want to thank Samara for sharing her story and congratulate her on her continued sobriety. I know personally how hard it is to be in active recovery. I'll end this bonus episode with a quote from Vicki Harrison about grief, one that I feel is particularly beautiful. Grief is like the ocean. It comes in waves ebbing and flowing. Sometimes the water is calm and sometimes it is overwhelming. All we can do is learn to swim. Thank you so much, squad, for tuning into this bonus episode. Stay tuned for a regular episode coming soon. Always remember, stay safe and be kind to each other. Thank you.